My name is Nuno Fazenda and I currently serve as Manager Scientific Engagement. I have a Master in Physics and a PhD in Engineering. I'm in the Scientific Communications Department explaining our science to scientists and non-scientists visiting the Cube. Travel with me around the building, I'll show you some of the places and some of the labs that we have here. This building was inaugurated in 2009. It's a very transparent building. It actually reflects the desire to be transparent in everything that we do, in the way that we conduct the science, being transparent also about communicating the results of the different scientific studies that we do. I believe transparency is important now everywhere in society. People want to know what's happening with governments, with companies. And for us, transparency is our way to gain the trust again. When you publish a scientific article, you have a limited amount of space uh, and figures and explanations that you can give. So Intervals was developed to let scientists look at our data in all the depths that they would require. So we have now studies that come from outside of the cube, shared on Intervals. And I think we've achieved the recognition that for this BMI, it's leading the way. It's made of three different buildings, an earth building, a wind building, and a water building. No fire, obviously, because we know that it's the combustion that produces all the large quantities of toxicants and carcinogens that are present in smoke, so we want to have products that stay away from combustion so we don't have fire. People, whenever they come to the cube, they really want to know if the aerosols from reduced risk products are truly less harmful than cigarette smoking. It's a very important question. We have over 400 scientists from a variety of disciplines working here. We have physicists, we have biologists, chemists, medical doctors, epidemiologists, clinical scientists, behavioral scientists, all working together towards the same goal, which is to offer men and women who otherwise would continue to smoke cigarettes less harmful alternatives. The most interesting question people ask us is why should we believe you? And I don't think it's about believing us. It's about taking the time to thoroughly look at and examine the science that we have put together in the most objective way, like many entities have done so far. I think it's important for people to come here to the building and see the types of, of labs that we have, also to speak to our scientists to get a first-hand impression on the quality of the studies and the quality of the science that we're doing here. We have today a moral obligation to provide smokers around the world with uh, uh, an alternative. If there are products that have the potential to reduce the risk of disease, they should be considered in the context of cigarettes and as a replacement for cigarettes. We are exploring new territories. We have created new products. We have built a huge amount of scientific data. So we need to speak about the data, look at the data in a very objective manner. Forget preconceptions or prejudgments on, on the, the science that we have performed and have a conversation. Trust is built you know, through getting to know each other, which means you have to have a dialogue. If we don't understand really what, what the concerns are, how, how can we address them, how we are expected to address them. The best thing we can do for our population is to get rid of cigarettes altogether and we know that tobacco control, although successful, will take decades and decades. So let's consider other alternatives that can help us minimize the number of smokers in every population. We are totally open to anyone who would like to know more about our science. It's really important for us to engage into a dialogue and explain what we do here. It's important for, for public health. It's important to have decisions made on facts and evidence, and it's important in that regard that people really understand, regulators, scientists, and others understand what we do. The over one billion men and women that smoke today really deserve that effort, taking the time in, in really looking at the science that we've done.